Ruan. What's up, people? Yeah, this is Ruan, aka Ruan of Vidge, as you can see on the channel Ruan of Vidge Way, my way. Not necessarily my way, but just some ideas I use when I'm working on my car. And this right now is my friend's car, a 2006 TSX. Yeah. But for today, you know, we're going to adjust the, the e brake, which is this. When you need to, when the e brake needs to adjust, normally it will point to the windshield or even to the, the rear view mirror. We want to know finish, it's like that, as you can see, it's pointing to the windshield. So, first thing when we're going to adjust the e brake, let down the, the emergency, and then. I'm going to jack up the car as it can and when you're doing this as like I said you don't have to be a mechanic that's why if you look on the channel run of it where I'm just showing you how I do it so you can probably follow and I'm going to try and explain it as best I, as I can so a normal regular person like myself can just follow and do the same thing because I know right now persons who, who is watching right now um, probably your yeah, e-brake right now is pointing to the windshield okay and this method is for the for Hondas not necessarily TSX but RSX Civics because most Hondas rear this back in their build I think the same yeah, the function the setup is actually the same setup roughly so the method applies from majority of owners with this back end all right so to start off the jack of the As you can see, we took off the tire and we have access now to the caliper. That's where the adjustment is going to take place. We're going to pull this, which is a 12, 212 bolt. But for this, um, we just got, need to pull only one. So we can get access to the, the, the piston. And this type of piston is, um, is a screw type. Not a push and push type like the the one on the front and sometimes when you're trying to pull it it will break but if you are if you're if you're noticing that when you're trying to pull the 12 you're seeing this not um if it's turning along with the, the bolt you can get um okay i get a 17 Wrench and you turn. We need to get this fully pry so we have access to the piston. And as you can see, this is it is held on by this um, flex hose, which is a brake line. And this is held on by a, a 12 bolt. This 12, it will fall down. So as you can see we have complete access now because this is not holding back the, the caliper anymore so we have complete access you have a special tool that you use to to screw this to turn this as, as i said this uh, is a screw type and not a push type but i don't have that special tool so i'm going to show you my way okay. you can either use a one of this flat mount screwdriver if it's wide enough to fit between and turn like this 
If you're having a little trouble turning, it's another method that I use. What do you say now? Um, which bolt I pull? Yeah, pull the 12. Mm -hmm. The 12 bolt. Yeah. That's this one hold the caliper in place. Yes. And you just pull only one. Okay. You don't have to pull any other one. You don't have to pull this one. Just the one. So you have access to the piston. Okay. And so you turn the piston. Piston counterclockwise. Oh. Because you want it to come as oh, close as possible to your yeah. to the, the this part. Okay. Yeah. I don't have that tool right now. So I have to do my my way. My method. Run of each way. Yeah. Okay, so what I do uh, and then uh, do something like this just to work the piston, then come back. Okay. You notice. Before what I should have done, what I should have done is was show you why the brake or the e-brake need to adjust. You would have noticed that this wouldn't have that slight tension on it. It would be just rotating, yeah, like um, a bicycle wheel. Yeah, no tension at all. What you need for it to just just enough. Just a little, just a grabbing just a little, just brushing just a little, so it's not turning freely. So this now would be enough. Yes, and I don't know if it is on that way, but they say it's supposed to auto adjust. Okay. As your disc pad wears, the, the piston adjusts to the amount of pads that's left on the, the caliper. So the, the, the piston is going to come outwards resulting in your e um your e brake pointing up the mm. more the piston come out the more the e brake go up because if if you notice how it works when you pull up the piston the, the e brake the piston push out so the piston comes out when the disc pad take it, um gradual, gradually worn down the piston the piston come out to match with this so that results in your e brake now pointing to the the, the windshield or the roof so when you are adjusting, what you do? Put in back the piston a little? No, I pull up. Um, turn Bring it out enough? Yes, enough. So close enough to the the, the, the disc pad. So, the e so no, you don't have to use the e-brake for e adjusting? Yes, no. Okay. So we work in the reverse. And as I said, these are 17 to all this because look if you notice it's not going to tight so I use that the same thing to hold the pin in place the sliding pin and then time it for once all right so when you remove your rear tires and you come to the rear caliper if you have it Spinning like this, you know that your brake need adjusting. As I demonstrate on the other side, also have a little tension on it. Like the pad is barely brushing on the rotor. Not like this. Adjustment needed when you see that. Coming to close. Let me see if I can explain this a little bit better. The reason why you now I said 
when um when you have the brake pointing to the the windshield it need to adjust because the piston right now is in when you pull the e-brake out when you pull the e-brake um it normally push out the piston the fact that the piston is more in you have to go further up with the e-brake to carry this out more so when we adjust this now and turn it counterclockwise it's like we're starting the process for the the we're giving the the the, the e-brake uh uh it starts so by adjusting this now we're kind of assisting the e-brake from inside the car so we are going to start the process i start the journey fight by turning this counterclockwise As I said, if you if it, it you turn it and it feels like it's a little too tight, not to worry. Just go inside. Pull the e-brake down back. Pull the e-brake down. And you notice almost free. So we need some more turn. Right. And we'll go back in there. And as I said, you use a 17 spanner. Some I don't know if other Hondas probably have a different size, but the main aim is to get something that fit this to hold it in place so you can tighten and if you don't have a 17 spanner you can use an adjustable just adjust it to the, the size of this and then use a 12 ratchet or wrench hold this in place tighten when you move the caliper mm -hmm. yes because if you leave it on it and you try to pull back this, uh -huh. you might damage your flex hose. And you don't need that. You don't want that. So that's how we remove this. Okay guys, for the last part of, oh, sorry. Yes, um, for the last part of that video, um, it got corrupted. If you notice, it just end abrupt. Well, not really abrupt, but it just end after um, um, I install what the rear the tire. But the main idea was to just show you how um, I just my rear brakes. Yeah, um, I do it from the rear, the back, the back brake instead of doing it from the, the e-brake like some people and as i said i've been doing that for years and it's been working for me so i just just my idea was to just show you how i do it you don't have to do it that way but that's just one way i, I um are just a way I, I do it so that's the end of the video unfortunately you didn't get to see the in because I, I wanted to demonstrate how it work and stuff that the adjustment work but let's say go and as I said like comment subscribe and share so see you again because as I say I have many more videos content remember you know, to, to subscribe to come so you can see them and click the bell icon so as I post a new video you get notified so um peace out <laughs>